Hello, everybody. I am Katarin Tudose. So the topic of the presentation is the financial data integration, which is an important problem into the today's software. Here you can see the contents of the presentation. We have addressed five big chapters. The problem of data integration, the architectures of financial data integration, the data transformation using Apache Camel, which is a special framework design for data transformation and integration. We are also going to discuss a little about applied enterprise integration patterns, and we are going to show how behavioral driven development is used for financial data integration application. So we are going to have five topics that we are going to address within this presentation. The first one is the problem of data integration, and it originates, of course, from practical problems. In many cases, uh, you cannot build a complex system from the scratch because it is very costly and uh, in most case it, cases, it is not successful. In most cases, you will prefer to assemble the system from the existing system that you have, like a puzzle, and you would like to integrate the existing components. But usually, the pieces of the puzzle are made in order to match each other, while uh, the systems themselves rarely integrate with one another. That is why the data integration focuses on this interoperation and on this integration of the systems. About uh, financial data integration architectures, they are designed also for practical reasons. The companies that work in financial service always require immediate access to high quality information. You know that uh, in financial services you need to move at a high speed and the data that is the raw material to produce the information has become more and more diversified and distributed. So the companies are required to optimally combine their business processes with the right tools and technologies in order to respond quickly to customer demand, to market opportunity and competitive threats. This challenge is a difficult one. That is why the problem of uh, financial data integration architecture is a very important one. And in most cases, as I was saying, you need to integrate some data from a provider in order to send it to a final target system. And here we show how a typical financial data integration architecture looks like. Usually, you are required to acquire some data from an external data delivery platform. This platform may provide a large variety, variety of data, so you are acquiring data from here. You need to design and to implement such an interface that will make the communication between this provider and the target system. And of course, the destination of the processed data is this target system, the system where we are sending data. So the challenge in most cases is to design this interface that allows the communication between the external data system and your own target system where data are to be sent into the desired format. In most cases, data that you are acquiring is not purely and simply saved into your own system. It needs some processing 
And for this, we need to define some mappings. And here we are going to explain what mappings uh, mean. Here we have the external provider fields, meaning that the external provider, the data that is acquired, will show us field one, field two, a number of fields that are significant for that external provider. This is the data that we are acquiring. And we would like to arrive to the step when we save the data within our own system, but with fields that are significant for our own understanding. So here, there is not a perfect match between the fields that are acquired from the external provider to the fields that are significant for ourselves. It may happen sometimes that there is one-to-one -one correspondence. This is possible. But in other cases, we need to process this data. We are using what is called mappings or fun functional mappings. Here, we are showing the situation when from four fields that are uh, acquired from the external provider, we are constructed one our own significant field that we are sending to the target system. So a combination of these external fields will give us the value of our own field. These are fields that are significant uh, into the external system. This is a field that is significant into our own system. And there may be situation when there is also a one-to-one -one correspondence, but we need to pass through some settings. This means that we need to take a look at some particular settings uh, that tell us how to process data. As a very simple example, you may take some data from here and according to some settings, you may save it into your own systems in month, day, year format or in day, month, year format. This is according to the settings from here. So this is the logic, the uh, uh, large overview of how these mappings and how this data processing is made in order to make the data processing and acquisition successful. And so we have addressed the large ideas of problem of data integration and the financial data integration architectures. We have pointed the main ideas in order to make understanding of how these processes are going to be implemented. We move to the data transformation using Apache Camel. I was saying that Apache Camel is a framework that is specially designed in order to make this integration process more powerful and more quickly. This is a framework that intends to simplify the life of the programmer that activates in the field of data integration. And at the core of the KML framework, there is a routing engine builder you have some data that you acquire from a source, as I was saying, and you are trying to route this data and to process it in order to arrive to some destination. And at the core of the KML framework is this routing engine builder. KML allows to define routing rules and KML will know from which sources to accept messages and will know how to process and send messages to other destinations. And of course, to the final destination where you will save your data. In order to do this, KML uses an integration language that allows to define complex routing rules. We are going to make a demo quickly. Just to add here that KML, important is that KML makes no assumptions about the data 
about the type of data to process. This means that KML is not looking at the fact that you are having data as XML, CSV, text, or bytes, or no matter what. KML will know to process this data with no assumption about the type. Also, KML comes with support for over 80 protocols and data types. When I'm saying a protocols, I'm, uh, as example, we may have the FTP protocols, the file protocol, meaning the way we are able to acquire the data. And we are going to do a small introductory demo. Here, we are going to show how you are doing a very simple processing, a very simple processing that means only copying a file. You may wonder why you should use this KMO Apache framework when you can do some operations by yourselves. Of course, there is an input output library that uh, is been uh, shipped with Java and you can use it in order to make some processing in order to take data from some source and to route it to some destination. This is perfectly possible. And here we have prepared for our demo some financial, financial data that will show us how this uh, is done. Here we have some securities or some financial uh, instruments that you may have heard about. There are some classical securities of this kind, wi widespread, which are bonds and equities. Here for our demo, we have prepared a bond like CSV, a bond as XML. This is a very simple and fictitious bond that we have shown here. Also, there is a financial instrument that is called equity that we have prepared here into the CSV format and also an equity prepared into the XML format. And for our demo, we are going to work with this data and show how it is processed. Also, we have here some bad data that will help us to show how uh, error, errors are processed. For the beginning, I was saying that we would like to show how a very simple processing is done with our classical instruments, with our classical Java libraries, with our classical input-output Java libraries. And here, this is a piece of code that may be familiar to you. We are trying to acquire some data from this folder, data securities, meaning this. And we are trying to save it, just copy it into the output or destination directory. And this is a piece of code that is doing it you may remark here that you need to create the directory by yourself to take a look at the files that are existing into the source folder and to process it piece by piece. You need to write your own copy file in order to specify the source and the destination. You need to handle by yourself these streams and you need to try and uh, close by yourself the streams. You do not have to forget all these operations. This is a piece of code that works, but it is pretty big for such a simple problem. And in, in plus, uh, it does not guarantee that as long as something is changing here into the folder, it will work. You will also need to track the changes inside this folder. Let's try to run this.
and we take a look at what has happened here. Of course, we have here a new folder as we have defined it and created it manually. It has been created and it has copied all files from the original securities folder to this outbox folder. And we said that it works. But we are going to take now a look at how the same thing is done with Apache Camel. Here you may already remark that there is a simple piece of code that has been written. The code needs to do the following. We are defining what uh, uh, we are defining a new camel context, which is a container that will uh, where we will put everything into, and we are going to discuss a little later about this. We are defining the roots, and the root says here we are taking from this source and we are going to send all information to this destination. Here it is very easy to understand how the uh, framework is uh, written. Even if you have never met Camel, you are able to understand immediately that, that we are taking something from here and we are routing it to here. We are defining this route. We are adding this, it to this conti container that is the context itself. We are starting the context and we are waiting for five seconds. After this, we are stopping it. Here, we are, uh, we are using, we are telling the uh, context, we are telling uh, Apache Camel to take the information from the file with the file protocol from the data securities folder. No operation equals true means that we are not going to move the data. We are going to leave it. We are just copying it and we are routing everything to this data outbox folder. And in order to make the demo, I am just going to delete the old outbox folder that has been created with the classical copier. I am going to start this copying. Here we are showing some Apache Camel logs. We are going to take a new look here and we have made the same operation, but this time Apache way and I think that the advantages are already remarked by the user. Here, just taking a look at the length of this code and, and the length of this code. It's already smaller. So this was the first demo that shows the advantages of using such a framework for data integration. Okay, going back to the presentation and uh, we are going to say a few things about uh, the Apache Camel framework itself and about how it has came into being. So it's, it has been built in order to make integration more productive. Projects that will need Apache that will use Apache Camel will be much more productive that, uh, than the projects that use the classical way. This project has been started in early 2007, so we may say that at this time, eight years after, it has been, it is a, already a mature open source project. And it is available under the liberal, liberal Apache license. Which are the main ideas behind this Apache Camel framework? First and most important, it is a routing and mediation engine. Routing and mediation means that you will be able to 
route your data to whichever destination final or intermediary that you would like to and you will be able to mediate in the sense that you can process filter data it is heavily based on what we call enterprise integration patterns when we speak about patterns probably your first idea is related to the design patterns to the classical design patterns a design pattern uses to solve a problem that is almost classical that is a design problem here we also have integration problems that have become classical so this means that uh, when uh, solving integration problems the people that have done this have uh, noticed that some problems are repeating and repeating themselves so like uh, into the design patterns there has been some effort in order to define some ideas that are repeating this is useful first in order to communicate how a problem looks like and then after that we communicate a problem that is repeating or is similar to something that we have already seen we can approach it the same classical way meaning that we already have a receipt to solve it so this is an enterprise integration pattern meaning that problems many problems are repeating and KML itself the framework itself is heavily based on this defined enterprise integration patterns then another idea behind KML is the domain specific language we have seen that KML is defining some proper language saying from to and many other things that we are going to see a little bit later so this is a domain specific language we are coming with our own definitions KML is also able to provide a component library that is also extensible we can define our own library of components it is a payload agnostic router this means that as I have previously said it doesn't care what it is carrying data may be in any format and KML will just not care if it is an XML a CSV or anything else it has a modular and pluggable architecture so it is easily extendable this is crucial for any framework also it relies on the POJO or on the BIN model you know what bin are, bins are in Java they are classes that can be reused and we will also show how we can use uh, these POJOs for our integration it is also easily configurable it has some automatic type converters uh, meaning that you can convert from one format to another automatically or if some format uh, doesn't have a type converter that is already defined you can define your own type converter it has a lightweight core meaning that if you download it the latest version will be less than two megabytes in order to be installed it provides an important test kit a large test kit and this is crucial for any integration framework this is because you are always trying to take data from some source process it and send it to a specific own format and you need to verify that the data that you have processed has arrived into a desired format this is based already you may already be familiar with what tdd test driven development 
is uh, KML goes somewhere further. It provides a large test kit, as I was saying, testing and making sure that everything runs fine and you are getting the data into the desired format is absolutely crucial. And last but not least, KML Apache has already a vibrant community, meaning that during these eight years, while it has been developed and used, it has always gathered around it some communities that can support you if you have some problems. If you are using some small framework that has only a limited number of users, then if you're running into problems, you will be on your own. But that is not with KML. That is not for KML, which has already a lot, a lot of users that have experienced a lot and can share knowledge and information with some others. This is a high view of the architecture itself. I was saying when I have made, uh, when I have run my first program, that there is a KML context where everything gets embedded. KML context is like a container where you will insert everything. You will insert the roots and you will have the components, you will have the processors, you may define everything there and embed it into this KML context. In fact, this idea of context is nothing new within programming and within Java programming. We are just pointing it out here that there is a KML context that acts like a container that will held everything. Everything that needs to be known at a certain moment will need to be defined and embedded into a certain KML context. Here is another view of this KML context. We see what it may contain. I was already saying I have been talked, I have talked about roots, which are very important and tell us uh, from where to where to root the data about data formats, languages, because we can we I was saying that we have a domain specific language, we have registries, we have type converters, already discussed about them. We have some components and endpoints. We are going to briefly point them into the next slides. I was talking about components. Components that are used mean by, as an example, the file component, the, the FTP component, the, the JMS component in order to point out some very common and uh, something that you may already be familiar with. Components act like a factory of endpoint. In order to be able to make communication, you need some endpoints. Components are the ones that create the endpoints and uh, make the communication and the routing possible. I was saying that there are a lot of components that are already defined within KML, but of course you can define your own components. Also a very important concept, and we have already mentioned it, are the roots. The roots that have been added into the KML context will tell us how to make the routing from which source to which destination. We may have an input source, we may have a final destination, but we may have some intermediary nodes in order to make some processing. You can imagine the roots I like lines inside the graph that connect uh, some uh, processor nodes. We have the type converters. Uh, I was saying that KML is able to do the type converting from one format to another automatically if it has already defined this type converter, or if it doesn't have a type converter, you may define your own type converter. 
Also, the data formats uh, are known inside the KML context. Uh, there is also a registry that allows you to look up bins or POJOs. I was uh, saying that they are also important and uh, uh, in KML. And we have the loaded languages. Uh, let's say that uh, KML is able to define its own roots and consequently its own behavior in a few ways. We have shown that domain specific language this way this is a language that is uh, designed to define the roots and to uh, make them add to the to the camel context but this is not the only way there is also a possibility to define the camel context and the roots in some spring way we are not going to uh, discuss uh, this in detail. I'm not going to use them for the demo, but for the moment, just to be aware that there may be different languages that may be used in order to define the same context and the same roots. What's behind everything here? It's the routing engine. KML has a routing engine that is the one that actually moves messages under the hood. You will not see it. You will just define your context. We'll configure it with adding roots and everything you will need. But the engine itself is not exposed to the developer. You just should be aware that it's there and that it ensures that messages are properly routed. This is in the spirit of what we already know as the important inversion of control concept. You are just defining the behavior like this simple behavior. And in our case, the routing engine will take care of everything. You just have to define this behavior. I was talking about the roots and I was saying that they are very important. Without roots, you cannot move any message. And if you would like to imagine the roots, how they uh, uh, look like and uh, which their destination is, you can imagine a graph. You may imagine the lines or the arcs inside the graph that will connect the processors. The goal of the roots is to decouple the clients from servers and the producers from consumers. You would like to allow clients and servers to be developed independently. And also for testing purposes, you would like to allow clients and servers to use mocks. In many cases, when uh, you would like to make some testing, you may consider using mocks just to simplify your life, your work. When you define a root in KML, it has a unique identifier that is used for logging, debugging, monitoring, and stopping and starting and stopping that root. A root has exactly one input source for the message, and you can root that message to one or more destinations. And I was saying, in order to define a root, there is a domain-specific language that is used. In our case, this is a little piece of domain-specific language. We are going to see more into the examples to come. This is something a little more extended than the simple from to root that you have seen. Here, we would like to uh, wire a pro, uh, two endpoints to send data from here to a file, to here, to another folder, but to filter it according to some condition. And this is one 
example a little one step forward in uh, to the example of the domain specific language and what you see here is something very common and that you will be able to use or encounter in many many camel projects what is a processor the processor is a node into the graph that i was talking about Many of the processors are implementations of EIPs, of Enterprise Integration Patterns. I was saying that Camel is heavily based on the EIPs and the designers of the, of the Apache Camel framework have tried to implement almost a one-to-one -one correspondence between the concepts of the Enterprise Integration Patterns and the processors that they have defined inside the framework. I have already discussed about uh, imagining the processing like a graph. So let's add one more thing, one, one more time that in uh, our uh, KML context, roots correspond to the arcs and uh, processors correspond to the nodes themselves. And I was saying in most cases, they are implementation of enterprise integration patterns. A component is the main extension point in KML. I was saying that uh, there are already over 80 components in KML and that you can create your own components for KML. Examples of components, you may remember that there are the file, the FTP, the JMS, and they are always associated with a name that's used in a URI. I have already said that they act as a factory of endpoints. Here is an endpoint that is a camel abstraction that models the end of a channel. When you arrive to an endpoint, it means that you have arrived to an end of a channel. And in order to configure an endpoint, you can use URIs. Here, you see that the protocol uses file and uh, the data is taken from this folder. And here you also have the option of a delay of 5,000 milliseconds. This means that you are going to pull this location looking for files every five seconds in order to see what is new and to process it. Also, a camel context defines producers. A producer is a camel abstraction that refers to an entity capable of creating and sending a message to an endpoint. When a message needs to be sent to an endpoint, the producer will just create the exchange and populate it with data compatible with that particular endpoint. You just need to route the message to endpoint and the producer will know what to do with it and how to uh, treat it. And of course, if we have producers, we need also to have consumers. Consumers are the source of the exchanges that are being routed in KMO. And in order to create a new exchange, a consumer will, of course, use the endpoints that wraps the payload being consumed. And we need to keep in mind that we have two kinds of consumers. We have the event dreamers, the driven consumers. When something happens, the consumer will act and consume that uh, message. And we have a polling consumer. A polling consumer is a consumer that is periodically checking in order to see if something else needs to be consumed. And this way we have treated the basics of data transformation using the Apache KMO. We are going to use we are going to move one step forward to the enterprise integration patterns and we are going to do some more practical demo. 
I was saying that KML is heavily based on enterprise integration patterns. And an enterprise integration patterns is analogous to a design pattern. And it is helpful not only because you provide a proven solution for a specific problem, but you can also define a problem and communicate it to some others, just to make sure that we are talking about the same thing. So these in enterprise integration patterns are heavily used both to define and communicate problems and to uh, model the Apache KML framework itself. Here we have a very common and very simple, a very common and very simple pattern. It is the content based router, and as its name is saying, it will allow you to route messages to the correct destination based on its contents. What we mean by content, it's pretty anything, pretty much anything in the message exchange. We can take a look at the format of the data type at the message header and so on. This is a piece of code that shows uh, how this content-based router is done. I'm going to move it to, I'm going to move to, to Eclipse here and I have prepared it this way. Here we would like to route some messages based on their content. And we take a look at how the format is. Here, of course, we are going to define our uh, KML context and embed everything that we need into that context. Here, we are going to add some routes. First, we would like to consume all securities from this folder from here and to send them to the uh, to a JMS queue. Here, this is a queue that we have called incoming securities. So everything that we would like to consume is sent into one single queue. And starting from this one single queue, this JMS queue, we are applying our content-based router. Here you see the essence of the content-based router. This means that depending on some condition, which in our case is the extension of uh, the file itself, either XML or CSV, we would like to make a decision to route based on the content, or in our particular case, based on the format of the file. Here we make a choice saying that when uh, the file is an XML, we are routing it to another JMS queue called XML securities. And when the file name has extension CSV, we are going to route it to another queue CSV securities. From here, we are going to do some processing and to send everything to different folders. Processed XML securities here, processed CSV securities here. Just to mark what has happened, we are going to log a message to say received XML security and or received CSV security. Let's try to run this and see what is going to happen. Here, the log is telling us what it has received, CSV or XML. So this means that the content-based router has made its duty and has correctly sent 
everything to the appropriate JMS queue. And of course, we are going to make a verification if the messages have been routed to the correct folder. And we see here that everything that is XML has been routed to this processed XML securities folder and everything that is CSV has been routed to this processed CSV securities. And that everything that does not conform to be either a CSV or an XML hasn't arrived to any destination. We, I said that we have on purpose introduced this file just to make our demonstration more clear. And we also have another demo for this securities here besides what we have these queues we are adding this jms bad securities queue from here we are not going to root them to any particular folder they will not arrive anywhere but we are going just say that something bad has been received and we are going just to log a message. And we are going to run this as well. We have the same folders with the same contents. In addition here, I was saying that we are just putting this as a log. This root, this piece of root, only tells us that something bad has been received, but is not going to be processed in any way. It is just going to be consumed from the JMS queue, and then it is lost. We just put a mark that something has happened. And this has been the demo for content-based router, which I was saying is one of the most common integration patterns that are widely used inside KML Apache. One step forward is to talk about uh, the, another, another pattern. It is the message filter. It is another pattern which acts in uh, some other way. Here we are, we are in the need to make some filtering based on some condition. This means that we are receiving here a series of messages and further, not everything will pass. Something will be filtered like this uh, photo shows. This picture shows one message that has a particular condition will not pass. It will be filtered. This is a piece of code of how it looks like. But of course, I'm going to move to the Eclipse demonstration. And I was saying that we have prepared here uh, a demo. We have something similar. We are consuming the files from this securities folder and we are sending absolutely everything to this incoming securities JMS queue. From here, we are going to take some decisions. We have XML securities, we have another queue of CSV securities, we have a bad securities queue. For the XML securities, here we are going to apply the filter pattern. We just say that we, we uh, start to consume from the XML securities JMS um, queue, but we are going to filter and to pass further only what it are uh, only the bonds. The bonds will be filtered 
the equities will pass. We have already seen a condition of this kind. This is a filter, and this is the condition to look at a particular X path. We are going to run. So we see that the logic was first, we had a, uh, the content-based router that we have talked about earlier. We have distributed everything according to the extension, XML, CSV, or something else. And from the XML queue, we have filtered only the equities. And here into the processed equities folder, we have obtained only the XML files that are equities, which in our case is one single file. We take a look at it. We have seen that here we have based the filtering condition on this X pass, which means that we take a look at security, security group X pass, and if it is equity, we are going to pass it. Here, the security, security group um, X pass was bond, so this one has not passed. And this has been the demo for the, for the filtering. I'm going to clean a little in order to be able to go further. I step forward to one more one more uh, enterprise integration pattern. This is the multicast and the name may be already familiar to you. This means that we are allowed to route the same message to a number of endpoints and process them in a different way. We have something that comes on this route and we are multicasting it. This is how it looks like. I'm going to go back to this demo. Here we show how this looks like. We have the same concept. We are consuming the files from one folder, which is the data securities one, and we are sending them to the JMS incoming securities queue. From here, we have a content-based router. And from the JMS securities, we are multicasting them, which may be the practical significance of this. We assume that we are receiving some files. We are consuming some files into some format. In this case, they are XML securities and we are trying to multicast them to two different destinations. We may assume that there may be two departments, two departments in our company, one analysis and one uh, archiving department, and everything will, be, will need to be routed to both destinations. This means multicast. So we are going to run this. So this works as we are expecting. So we have consumed the XML files and we have sent them the same ones to two different destinations, to the analysis department and to the, to the archiving department, just to make sure that we have the same thing that has arrived to analysis and the same thing that has arrived to the equity. And this is the multicasting, the multicasting enterprise integration pattern.
And one more, one more pattern in, uh, in uh, order to conclude and to complete our demonstration about enterprise interpretation patterns is the recipients list. This pattern allows you to route the same message to a recipient list that is dynamically calculated. What does it mean is that we may have this. Of course, the same logic, but here we show how the, the destination is dynamically calculated. We pretend here that uh, we are going to send everything to this analysis. And if there is some bond, we are also uh, sending uh, this bond to the archiving department. We may pretend the, into the logic that if we receive uh, something different uh, than a bond, meaning an equity, we need to do some analysis and then to decide probably if we need to archive. But if this is a bond, we will be sure that there will be no more other processing that is uh, required. And we are just going to put it to archiving as well. We, here we have the logic into this process. I was saying that this is a node that makes some processes. And this is the recipients list that is dynamically built. By, by default, the recipients list contains the analysis department. If we have a bond, we are going to add the archiving uh, department as well. And we are going to make a run. I must have deleted this ones. And yes, sir. I will delete them and redo. Here we see that we have dynamically built the recipient list. Here into the analysis, we have both. And to do our hiving, we have only the bond. As I was saying that, we assume that before uh, uh, arriving to the archiving department, probably this equity needs some more processing. This is one way to build uh, the recipients list, and we can also build them with, using a bin or a pojo. I have already mentioned that uh, pojos are heavily used inside, inside the KML Apache. And here for our demo, we see that we have this bin that will tell us how to root. The logic is the same. If it is a bond, it is also archived. Otherwise, it is only analyzed and maybe some decision will be, taking, will be taken later. And here is where we introduce the logic of uh, the recipient's list using a bin. We are going to run this once again. We have, we must have the same result. Everything goes to, a, to an analysis department, to the archiving department, only the bonds are sent. And this also concludes our recipients list demo. Let's say that for the moment we have pointed out four very important enterprise integration patterns. They are among the most widely used. Of course, there are a lot of other integration patterns, just like the design patterns, which which are widely used. From these ones, we have tried to make a small demo choosing 
four of the most important ones. And this concludes our enterprise integration patterns uh, demonstration as well. Still have one, one more topic on uh, the agenda. This is about the behavioral driven development usage for the financial data integration application. I was saying previously that uh, probably most of you are familiar with what is test-driven development. Test-driven development uh, as a concept means that you would like to build an application and you would like it to be self-tested. And you will always try to add some new functionality by first by adding a new test, a test that is expected to fail, then you will write some piece of code to repair that test. You will see that uh, after writing that piece of code, the test will pass and you will continue the process. This is, uh, generally speaking, the test-driven development. You always try to add some piece of code in order to get some appropriate functionality. And uh, you always make sure by the test that the piece of code that you're adding is appropriate. It adds some value. The limitation with this test-driven development is that it always, always tests. It's a unit test. It tests a particular method or a particular class. It does not look at inter uh, interaction between classes. This is something that is closer to what we call integration testing. And behavioral driven development is close to this integration test. A behavioral driven development tries to define some expected behavior from the user and how it will act in order to do something. We are uh, defining a scenario. We are saying that, example, you are going to to the bank, you are uh, taking your card, uh, introducing it, asking for some money. Uh, the uh, the uh, machine will tell you if you have funds enough and if yes, it will return you the money. This is a real scenario that you would like to test. It is the behavior of the real user. And for uh, financial data integration, we are trying to define some scenarios. The software tool that is used for uh, these scenarios is the Cucumber. Cucumber is a software tool that allows us to write a scenario in what we call a uh, almost a uh, natural language. Here, I have written some small scenarios. We assume that we are in the situation of importing two different securities, two different financial data information. One bond, import a bond, or import an equity. And here is something that we define, it's almost natural language. Here we say, we pretend that we are requesting to import a particular bond that is received within a particular file. And we have some settings and some mappings. Remember that we have discussed about some settings and some about settings and mappings at the beginning of our presentation when discussing the principles of uh, financial data architectures. And then we get a new bond. This is what we are expecting. And we are expected, expecting to have uh, 
an info message within our logs. This is a possible scenario for importing a bond. This is a possible scenario for importing an equity. We are just defining the steps in almost natural language. When I say here given and and and, these are the preconditions. When I say then and, these are the conditions that are expected. This is an input file that is written, I said, in almost natural language. We are trying to translate this, these scenarios into a code. And to do this, we have the opportunity to run. Here, there is something that is provided by the Qcumber API. I can run with this as input, and I am going to obtain what is called a skeleton. This is how the skeleton of my uh, testing application will look like. Here we have some generated methods for which, of course, I will have to write my own code, which are uh, receiving some annotations. Here you see that we are co uh, this corresponds to the steps within our scenario. We have transformed this with Qcumber rules into this skeleton. We need to write this class and to put the skeleton inside there. For the moment, I'm just copying the skeleton, putting it here. import what we need to import as well. And look, we have already obtained what is the skeleton. Here, of course, it, it contains nothing. It, from now on, it is the programmer's task to write all the logic here that will correspond to these actions. But pretending that we are able to, to write them, we will be able to write, to, to execute this test and to see uh, that what we are going to obtain is correct. For the moment, I was saying that we are just having a skeleton Everything remained here like it was as it was defined by the cucumber. We are ev throwing exceptions everywhere. Of course, we would be able to to uh, write some code. This will take some time and is besides uh, the scope of our presentation. But just like a principle of the behavioral driven development and uh, of the cucumber software tool, I think it is pretty clear how it acts. This was uh, what I have already presented to you, uh, like input files. So this uh, concludes our presentation and please proceed with, with questions if you will have. So I have been asked if uh, KML is an extension of Apache. Uh, I would say that KML is one of the products that is provided by Apache. Uh, the Apache license uh, provides us uh, some uh, some series of products. We know about Ant and Maven as example. And Apache is one product, one framework that is uh, uh, somehow similar to this, meaning it is developed and provided by uh, the Apache, by the Apache Consortium. Then I have been asked about how, where can I find the KML context class? So the KML context class uh, is to be found within the, uh, within uh, the Apache framework itself. Here I will show, I have uh, used uh, Maven 
in order to uh, to manage this uh, project and here I have defined these dependencies that I was needed in order to especially this one this is the first one that came al core the artifact ID so this camel context is in fact an interface that uh, is defined within the org apache camel uh, package when you need to define a context you will need to create such a context so this is uh, how we have uh, managed this we uh, define an object context type interface camel context and we have this class default camel context we define this at the beginning of our uh, program we add roots or something else that we need here we start the context meaning that the context with uh, including its content will know how to act uh, based on what has inside we run it meaning that we, we are uh, waiting for five seconds and at the end we are uh, stopping it between this point and this point we are having five seconds and the camel context will know what to do we'll know how to act depending on the roots and the processing that are defined inside it Uh, here, uh, there is a question if it is possible to get a few words about how to came an application about how to deploy. Uh, if we want to, to migrate, I understand that this is the question. We have some application and we would like to uh, move it to the camel style to include uh, the KML framework and to start working with it. So one uh, method, one very good method would be to do what I have done here, to use Maven in order to, de to define the dependency, the dependencies that need, and then uh, you will have everything brought here. You have seen that we have these libraries these libraries need to be on uh, the path of the project. You can add them by yourself, but better using uh, such a tool like Apache. Here, you, will, you are able to, to import all the needed uh, libraries or needed jars, and you are able to use them inside your, uh, inside your project. Of course, when you will deploy your application you will need to deploy them together with uh, the needed jars here are some other question if it is possible to use camel for data transportation between different hosts uh, what uh, i can imagine in order to give you a practical example is to uh make the transportation let's say uh, using protocols like http or ftp i think this is a good example i was saying that uh, camel has about 80 protocols that are already embedded so uh, it will not make any uh, difference uh, between uh, based on the fact for where data comes from one possible scenario is let's say that uh, one customer of mine uh, is uh, providing some data using an FTP site from where I would like to access them and to acquire them. I do some internal processing uh, into on my uh, personal machine and the obtain uh, results i am going to publish on a website using http so here we have three hosts in, uh, involved it is a perfectly possible scenario to acquire through ftp from one host process on my own machine 
and to publish results on some other uh, machine with HTTP. So uh, the short answer would be yes to this question, but I was uh, giving an example just to uh, understand the better what I was saying. Uh, here, another question is if uh, Apache Camel supports multi-threading. Uh, being a, a Java framework, of course, we need to think about uh, multi-threading. It is possible uh, to make some uh, processing in parallel. Uh, this may speed up the, uh, the processing. You ask uh, if we need to care about that. What we need to care about is uh, the fact that uh, we are under uh, inversion of control. So in most cases, Kamal Apache will know how to do its uh, job uh, no matter with, with, without the user's intervention. If we would like to make some parallel processing, we will be allowed to do this. But we just need to carefully design in our mind or uh, in our ideas uh, if we really need uh, something like a parallel processing. We define some conditions, we define some settings, and the, the, the Apache KML framework will take care about this. If there is something that goes wrong, we can test this using uh, the Apache KML uh, testing framework. And we can understand that we have designed something wrong and we can change. So the short answer is yes, but I have also given some uh, uh, details. Uh, cucumber here is uh, cucumber. Cucumber is like uh, the cucumber that we eat. Uh, it works with uh, Java 6 at least. I have tested it. With, um, of course, it works uh, Java 7 and 8, but what I can guarantee you is that uh, both Cucumber and Camel work with Java 6. Uh, here, a small question, Ray Cucumber, and I see nothing else. Uh, somebody is asking if I can share uh, the demo project. So it's here. I don't know what exactly this means. The answer is yes for, for this question. Uh, uh, can I stop a camera context from inside? Yes, you can. Uh, do this at a particular condition. Here we have just started and stopped the KML context. And here between the starting and the stopping the KML context, we have waited for five seconds. We have waited for, for uh, five seconds uh, because we are assuming that KML was going to do its job within these five seconds just to copy and make the processing. If you will need to stop at a particular condition, of course, this is uh, absolutely possible. Uh, for Alexandra Zin, yes, we can say that the uh, KML framework is a kind of ETL tool. Its, uh, its purpose is to make, I was saying, its purpose is to make uh, integration speedy, productive, and to write less code. I was saying from the very beginning that if we take a look at something like this, we will immediately understand what is happening. You do not need to be familiar with a camel in order to understand such a piece of code. Here I am asked uh, about uh, the fact that uh, after we generate the skeleton, how attributes describe uh, Let's say if, if I understood well, this is 
the skeleton. This is the skeleton that was obtained from this. Here I have imported it uh, into a Java test uh, file and uh, Cucumber will know that the method that is annotated with this will correspond to this piece of scenario. The method that is annotated with this will correspond to this piece of scenario and so on. And Cucumber will know to execute all methods when running a scenario will know to execute each method based on the order within it. So when uh, Cucumber starts to execute the scenario, we'll look at this, execute the corresponding uh, method, we'll then look at this, and so on. Uh, yes, uh, running the code uh, uh, starts when uh, the context starts. Before that, you are just defining. It's like if you want a comparison, you are defining a, a highway. You say you go from here to here. You need to have uh, uh, some uh, uh, exit here. And when I say context start, the cars are starting to effectively run on the highway. Okay. So I have answered this. I have answered this. Uh, you can stop the context practically anywhere, but in this case, uh, the results will not be so good. It's like, let's say that we are running, to make a comparison, it's like you are running uh, a Java program at, at some time, you are just uh, stopping the Java virtual machine. We can make a comparison with the consequences. Uh, if it is possible for Qcumor to convert from code to text, as far as I know, not. If you have uh, some uh, uh, scenario that for which you have already written some methods, uh, I'm not aware of being able to import somehow and to get a scenario of this kind. You just need to define your scenarios and to associate your methods with uh, the code itself. From, from text to code. Uh, so here we have, I'm not sure how, what are you thinking about, but I understand. Uh, I try, I'll try an answer uh, that hopefully will uh, be what you're expecting. So here, when you write a scenario in text uh, mode, you are uh, defining the steps in almost in uh, plain words, in natural language. I say given, when I say given, I am defining a condition. I say given, given effect, given the fact that I am trying to import a bond and given the fact or, or given the fact that I am going to to a uh, teller machine, I'm trying to extract some money. These are some preconditions. You will not be able uh, to uh, write your own, the code directly, but you will be able to obtain this skeleton to know that this, for example, this uh, method will be the one that needs to include the logic of the fact that you have requested to import a bond with code. So you are just uh, getting the skeleton. What needs to go here, 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 and so on, 
is something that you as a programmer will need to write by yourself. You will need to effectively say what means in terms of business logic and in terms of your own code, what it means that you do this step or this step. Uh, problems, of course, somebody is asking if there are problems. Of course, the, the, there are problems. Uh, one of the most common problems is that are that uh, you are not uh, getting what you are expecting. You are trying to import some data to transform it, and uh, you are looking uh, at uh, the results. And uh, one of the most uh, pro common problems is that the tests are failing and you need to repair them. Uh, if you are talking about uh, KML itself, I would say uh, that it is a pretty stable uh, framework. So uh, we did not uh, face uh, failures or uh, major problems, if that was uh, the question about. Uh, Mihail Eisman is, is uh, asking about some other, uh, about Gherkin. Uh, yes, I know about Gherkin. Uh, this is uh, an alternative uh, uh, special language, uh, but uh, we did not do this. We have just uh, done uh, this uh, cucumber scenarios. Any more questions? I if there are no no other questions, I think we are we are done with uh, with my presentation. <laughs>